Welcome back to Travels of Preston. If this is your first time stopping by, salute to you. You can catch me every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on my channel. Don't forget to open the description box and check out my other links to my social media platforms. Also, hit the like button and subscribe to become part of the travel family. Leave a comment and tell me what you think about today's episode. Check out my previous episodes and let me know what you think about them too. Today, I want to talk about living abroad. <sighs> that just sounds so good, living abroad. I lived in Germany for three years and I lived in South Korea for one through the military. So my story might be slightly different than an actual true foreigner living on the economy, but the concept is the same. With that being said, here we go. So the first thing that caught me off guard was the time difference. And I'm gonna start with South Korea. Now I'm an American living on the East Coast. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I had, I had to really like adjust. It was about roughly 14, 15 hour time difference. So, I mean, it just, it just hits different when you know you 15 hours ahead of your family or friends. Cause I'm like, oh, it's Friday night. Wait a minute, you know, it's Friday morning where they at. You know, you gotta wait till they get off work or it's just crazy. Like even getting paid. Uh, I didn't have a uh, foreign bank. I still had an American bank. So if it was payday, like, oh, I get paid on Friday. Well, technically, you know, I'll probably won't get paid to Saturday or, you know, something, something like that because of, you know, of the time difference. So I really had to get used to that. Uh, and even with my family, like they're, they're trying to contact me. They like, hey, I called you uh, asleep. Oh, hey, I called you. Yeah, I was at work. You know what I'm saying? So that that really um, opened my eyes to just how big the world is. I mean, it seemed like it could be small because we can get to places so quickly. But I'm gonna say that time difference is is it's crazy. If um, like I said, most people experience it obviously for a short amount of time, for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. But when you go and actually live somewhere in a whole other time zone, it does make a difference. So I really wanted to touch that first is the time difference because you definitely got to get used to that. So the next thing is the language. Damn. <laughs> you know, and I'm, hey, I'm guilty for this too. That's what I'm about to say. That sometimes you go places and you'll be like, you'll speak a dumber form of your language trying to get somebody to understand. If they don't understand English, they don't understand English. So me saying, do you understand? Hey, hey, bro, they don't understand. Just stop. Just chill. Time out. You know what I'm saying? So I would say try to learn the language, you know, the best, you know, to your abilities. You know, get a little travel book. Um, and I say a lot of younger generation, they speak English. They, they usually speak uh, decent enough English to where you can get around. And if you're not in a country that has English words, say like England or uh, Ireland or something like that, you know, you know, anything in like, I guess that UK area, they usually speak, you know, English and everything's in English. But if you go somewhere like, you know, Poland or something, yeah, bro, it's, it's, it's a wrap. Everything, it might as well be ancient Greek or something like that. But um, that is a big deal. Try to learn it. I try to learn German. Didn't pan out too well. Uh, my teacher, Frau Ragnar. She was an asshole. I'm just going to just say that. She was just a complete asshole. Um, so, but uh, shout out to her because she damn damn sure failed me in that class that I didn't, need, didn't even need, you know, I didn't need that credit to graduate, but she was just an asshole. So anyway, um, so yeah, like I said, language is a real big uh, barrier for most. Uh, so you definitely try to learn it. Uh, reading it is a monster. Sometimes, you know, you can get the conversational piece down, but then you can't, you know, maybe read or write it but you can, you know, speak it or whatever. So that's at least half the battle. Uh, getting around, man, I'm telling you, get a, a, a map, uh, make sure you have your GPS, make, it, make sure you have good signal where you just like, all right, we're good, you know, because, hey, you get lost. It's unforgiving out there. Sometimes you'd be like, I got lost in um, South Korea and I can't remember where I was going, but I'm over there doing sweating bullets. I'm like, damn. Where am I? Like, you know, help, please help. And everybody just looking at me like, 
sorry, American, I can't help you. Um, I actually went to a, um, they got like little informational booths or like along the highway in Korea. And um, the lady, you know, she kind of helped us. And when I say kind of, she just pointed to a map and was like, use that. So I'm just on the map like, All right, I'm not a dummy. The army taught me how to read a map. And that's how I've navigated my way back down. But so if you got some great uh, map uh, reading skills, you might be all right. Especially, oh, and um, when it comes to map, make sure you have, um, like, like GPS, make sure you have, you know, the most latest up-to-date maps because I didn't got, you know, food out there a little bit. Um, I had my old Tom Tom, and that thing failed me. I was like, hmm, you know, I'm about to, you know, get robbed any minute now. Thanks for making me turn a left, you know, <laughs> in this random location. But yeah, so language, language, language. Make sure you learn the language. And also, locals will appreciate you even attempting to, um, you know, communicate in their language. Um, another big thing I had to get used to was food. Uh, I'm not a big foodie, but like I told you guys, I do promise to try to get out there and start eating uh, more than just chicken, beef, and pork. Um, so that should be on the way next year. But so food, uh, everything's obviously the same. Chicken is a chicken, beef, pork, fish, or whatever. Uh, you might have a different variation of the fish depending on the location, obviously. But what makes it different or weird is how it's prepared. Because I know when I got to Korea and you're just sitting there going into the restaurant and you, it is crazy because you damn near feed just like, you know, not feed, but you almost like cooking yourself. They set you at a table. They put a little griddle, a little hot plate in front of you and be like, have at it. Matter of fact, go over there and grab your own meat. And then you just so you just start grabbing meat that look like something that should be eaten. Uh, that really messed me up. Um, and like I said the taste might be a little different because they prepare a little different. Uh, the different seasons and stuff like that. Um, I know in Germany, uh, you know, it's like uh, schnitzels and pork chop. I know what a pork chop tastes like, but it damn sure don't taste like their schnitzels, you know. But uh, the schnitzels are good. They're just breaded pork chops. Uh, but it does taste a little different. You know, their sausages will taste different. But they have like a gang of sausages. I'm like, too many damn sausages. I mean, they got like currywurst, bratwurst, um, uh, I don't know. They got worst of a worst. I, I don't know, but they got all this craziness, and I'm like, uh, can I just get a sausage? You know, that's how I used to um, treat them. But um, the food is amazing. The different seasonings and stuff like that. So don't do it like I do, and just you know, just be like, uh, let me find a McDonald's. Uh, let me get a number two. You know, what I'm saying no. You actually, you know, try to eat some of the local food. Uh, even the candy, the sweets, the breads. You know, everything's a little bit different. It seems to be a little bit fresher. Uh, I really do appreciate Germany for that because, you know, they only shop for maybe two or three days at a time versus like Americans when we be like, well, we're about to go spend this $600 on these groceries, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get it in for like the next three weeks. So I actually do like the way uh, Europeans shop um, a little bit better than, you know, what we do. So I guess, you know, the fresher, the better. Um, next thing will be the uh, currency. So... Like I said, for me, I was an American living over there, so I was still getting paid in my regular American dollar. So the time that I was in Germany, the dollar was just getting destroyed. So I was getting euros, you know, out the ATM. And just to give you an example, at the time frame, um, I would go to the ATM and pull out 20 euros. And I'm looking at the receipt. Like, oh, okay, what's 20 euros in dollars? Oh, man, that was like damn near $28. And I'm like, so that was just, you know, mind boggling to me. 20 euros. So like pretty much every 20 euros, I was losing $8. So, I mean, things add up very quickly. So I try not to shop on the economy too much. But, you know, when you out and about and you're not on a uh, military installation, hey, it is what it is, you know, do what the Romans do. Um, and the same thing in Korea, like Korea, I didn't really have to shop on the economy too much. Um, you know, you might go to like, like I said, like the restaurants and stuff like that, but the luck, you know, the good part is I've never had to get gas on the economy in Korea. I don't know how I managed that, but I don't ever remember getting gas on the economy. I always got, I always filled up on installation. Germany, it's impossible because it's so spread out. 
you will be going to one of them SO stations or something like that to get gas um, in the leaders or whatever. And then be careful on them leaders too, because it's a monster. So, so when it comes to actually converting, you actually want to look at the perfect days to actually uh, convert your money over because you can lose a lot of money, uh, you know, over the, you know, over um, a time period if you don't pay attention to that whole, you know, you know, what is the best time to buy money, who to get money from, whether it be the ATM, the bank, you know, things of that nature. Um, I normally go to ATMs. Uh, I just do that when I travel. Uh, it's very rare that I actually uh, get that country's currency before I actually arrive. But, uh, you know, when I obviously when I lived there, um, I actually opened up a local bank uh, of a banking account in Germany and uh, still was in American dollars. But then obviously I was able to actually open up certain things. Um, you know, I had a T-Mobile account. Uh, I didn't know T-Mobile was German, you know. So that's how I paid bills and stuff like that. It was, it's, it's, it's really crazy when you start doing this stuff like that. Um, one is real, real big topic is the culture slash like holidays. Don't even worry about, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, don't even worry about 4th of July and stuff of that nature. You know, just, just let that go. Just let that go by, you know, now, now you're in a whole nother area, another country, stuff like that. Try to, you know, get on their customs and courtesies and, you know, stuff like that. You know, um, I try to wear their traditional garments when I can, you know, I have my old leader hosing and I'm on top of, you know, tables, prosting and all that stuff like that. Uh, I still need to make it to, um, to, uh, Scotland trying to get, you know, your boy trying to get a kill. Um, so yeah, I, I usually try to blend in, try to blend in and, you know, have a good time and not be disrespectful with it though. Like I don't alter their traditional garments or anything like that. I don't sit there and be like, well, let me Americanize this. No, I try to get their traditional garment, wear when they wear it, and be respectful, uh, you know, to everybody else, you know, because I would want somebody to do the same thing to me. Um, another thing is uh, customs, like driving. Be wary of that. So I know in Germany, I had a, um, I had a European license through the military, but that only allowed me to drive in Germany. So I had to get a uh, international driver's license. So that was pretty cool. Get an uh, international driver's license to allow me to drive, obviously, internationally. But, um, hey, I was whipping him. Hey, the Lambo, I mean, that thing, like, hey, I could fit anywhere. Not really, but in my mind, I could fit anywhere. Uh, the Lambo was too big to park a lot of times. But we got around. Um, didn't I tried to go to London and get a car. And I was like, um, no, sweating bullets again, just because, you know, they drive on the other side of the road. And then the like, same thing with Ireland. I didn't know Ireland drive on the other side of the road. So that was real uh, surprising to me. And it was just it was just weird. Like they even had signs on the on the ground to make sure that you look certain ways so you don't get hit by something. So that was uh, so I guess, you know, obviously it's a sign on the ground for a reason because somebody got smacked. Um, so make sure you pay attention to stuff like that and just, uh, you know, be respectful. You know, like I know a lot of times, like they treat their elders a little bit better than, uh, Americans treat, you know, our elders. So make sure you speak, you know, head nods or anything like that. Just be, just be conscious of where you at and, you know, uh, and things, I think things will go well for you. And, uh, like I said, leave a comment below and let me know some of your stories about living abroad. Cause like I said, my hopes and dreams is, you know, when I retire from my profession that, um, that I maybe, you know, live overseas somewhere. And I definitely want to hear some of these good places that I keep hearing about. So until next time, peace.